Hello, and welcome to the Mythos Mystery Society. We are doing our first episode tonight of Delta Green. It's a new game none of us have played before. It's a kind of military, modern-esque uh, Cthulhu game. Ty, you uh, forgot Ty. the branding. Uh, schmuckies! Schmuckies! Don't look back! <laughs> <laughs> don't look back in anger, it's schmuckies. <laughs> <laughs> Schmuckies, um, don't look back. It's a pride of lions. Schmuckies. <laughs> are, are we making? Are we each making up a call sign? I no, I mean it, it, it tends to happen, but it's one. not on purpose. <laughs> Schmuckies, it's not you, it's me. Schmuckies. Oh, heartbreaking. Uh, I am. Uh, every, every, everyone drinks. <laughs> oh God. Uh, I am Ty. I, I am your. Uh, for this game, it's called a handler. I am the handler of this game. And uh, let's go around and everyone introduce themselves. All right, I can go or next. Or Dave. Yep. Uh, my name is Kenny Morgan. I work at Dark Side Games, and I'm a game engineer. Uh, that and, and I'm, you know, I I I'm young. I'm pretty young to be here. I'm 25. I'm probably the youngest out of all of us. But uh, yeah, that's who I am. I'm I'm a dorky young game engineer who works at Dark Side Games. <laughs> I'm uh, my name's Chris. I'm playing Gordon Minuteman Spanks, and uh, he's in. He works for OSHA, and he's also executive chef of his own his own restaurant. And they call him Minuteman because he can walk into any restaurant and find enough violations to shut him down in just a minute. That's awesome. <clears throat> All right, yeah. My name is my name is Chase, and and I am playing Ezekiel Pentagast. I am a. Uh, Member of the FBI. I'm a special agent out of New York City. The deep south of New York City. <laughs> I didn't say I was born and raised in New York City, no, did I? Good point. Deep south. Deep south. All right, and this game begins about six months after you've all been recruited and completed your basic training. Now, you all stand in a line side by side in a dark, dark room, only barely lit with several red lights. Next year, the familiar faces that you spent the last six months training with. Standing on a slightly elevated platform is a pretty muscular looking man, spiked hair, which looks uh, prematurely stark white for his apparent middle age. He wears a beard of similar color and a reflective pair of aviators. All right, stand tall maggots. This is your first official day in squad drumstick of Delta Green. Um, yeah? A scrawny man with curly red hair nervously raises his hand to the right of Kenny. I, I don't know. I don't know if I should be here. I just, I'm a vet. And I saw a weird cat once. It had just a whole bunch of eyes and, and some tentacles. Um, it's just more than I'm used to seeing in felines. Unfortunately, I am not uh, in the recruitment division. I am your handler. I'm also from refer to me as Sir or Big Papa. We've all been in this uh, drab abode for your first assignment. At the far left of this line, an olive skinned woman with short black hair steps forward and salutes. Sir, I'm ready for whatever mission you fit to find fit to send me on. I like your moxie, you brown noser. Assignments will be doled out based on your skill sets and competency. He approaches the woman and hands her a salmon-colored envelope. Now, why don't you take Dr. Doolittle over there to Garage 3 in 15 minutes, grab whatever you need, and set out. She salutes to him and grabs the shirt of the red-haired man next to her. Oh, wait, I can't, like, uh, talk to animals or anything. Am I supposed to know that for this man? And the voice trails off as he is dragged down the hall. Handler turn, turns towards the remainder of you, adjusting his aviators. Well, that leads you three. And I want you all to describe yourselves, physically. All right. Well, Kenny is a very lanky guy. Um, are we, like, decked out in full... No, you're just wearing whatever your, like, fatigues would be. Ah, okay, cool. So, um, so I'm, like, I'm wearing, like, a gray hoodie with our, with the game, uh, company that I work for, the logo on it. Uh, and just jeans with some, like, converses. <laughs> and I'm, I look very out of place compared to all these older people or, like, people that are very much more serious and military about this. I'm just standing there like, did I come to the wrong building? <laughs> but I, I'm used to it by now. So I'm just standing there pretty confident, but still seemingly looking out of place. <laughs> Gordon, uh, Gordon Spank stands there, uh, uh, when you looked at his face, you could see that he's in his mid-40s, about 41, maybe 42. Uh, thinning hair on top, but tries to keep it still tough together. A little bit towards the front, decent athletic build. Uh, you can see the wrinkles on his face, especially around his mouth. Looks like he does a lot of 
yelling. <laughs> and uh, Ezekiel is tall and slender, but despite his gaunt and slight frame, he moves with surprising gracefulness. Um, he's got pale skin, platinum blonde hair, and eyes like two blue flecks of ice. All right. He, uh, who has the highest intelligence of you oh, three? What's your stat for intelligence? It's me. Mine's 14. 17. Wow. Ooh, smart. Mine is 11. I like to think right. I'm smart. <laughs> uh, the handler uh, turns towards uh, Gordon and approaches, uh, handing a burgundy envelope. All right. Read it over. Grab what you need. And uh, meet in Garage 6 in uh, 20 minutes. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but get a little giddy because it reminds me of all those Rainbow Six games I used to play. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, let's see what we got over here. He opens it up. Okay. Um, the envelopes, uh, as you open up the envelope, it's a case file. Uh, at 5.23 a.m. yesterday morning, which would be, yesterday would be July 6, 2019, uh, there was a six-year-old boy was discovered wandering around naked near the trailhead station of Yosemite National Park, near the Het Hetchy Re Reservoir. This boy identified himself as Brandon McGill of Topeka, Kansas, and asked to call his parents. The ranger who found the boy, Tomika, uh, Tomika Galagos, conferred with the FBI shortly thereafter about a missing person, and sent a photo of the boy. They were able to confirm this identity, but Brandon McGill went missing in 1980 at age 6, so he should be quite a bit older now, about 45. Um, the eight, one of our agents in the FBI, one of the Delta Green agents, uh, managed to tie up the, the actual FBI with a bit of paperwork and red tape, but we expect them to arrive in the scene about 36 hours. Your mission before you, before they arrive, is one, <coughs> locate the child. Two, identify the child. Three, determine if there are any unnatural forces at play. Four, remove any unnatural threats you find. And five, as always, make the outcome appear mundane. And that is what the case file says. And it has a picture of the boy. He's curly, blonde hair. That's about it. He's very scrawny, dirty. It's a picture, the same picture of the sense of the FBI. And what was the name of the child? Brandon McGill. Got it. Well, this is a surprising turn of events. Went missing in the 80s. Seems like a still child. This reminds me of an episode of the Twilight Zone or something. Well, yeah, that, was my, that was my big question right there. If uh, if we saw anything. So it looks like uh, he was a child there. Eh? Yeah, it says he looks young, I guess. <laughs> mm. Well, I guess until we get out there and get to the heart of the matter, we'll determine if this could potentially be just uh, some kind of copycat. You know, sometimes people get in their heads that uh, they get obsessed with some kind of uh, missing persons and try to pawn themselves off. Yeah, look, I mean, things look weird sometimes, you know, it's not that big a deal. You know, this whole, this whole outfit, it's kind of a joke anyway. I mean, come on. You look around, some things, nature takes a weird turn. I mean, we can take care of things that look unnatural, but nothing here is ever, like, paranormal or nothing. Yeah, I mean, you'd probably be able to look at the boy and tell within a minute if he's got a problem, right? And I give him, like, an elbow because I'm trying to be friendly with my new teammates. <laughs> <laughs> I regret it immediately. <laughs> I regret this immediately. That's funny. Yeah, kid, 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 look at me. Look at me. Look yeah, at me. Yes, yeah. I'll give you I'll give you that one. All right, I'll give, I'll give you that one. Do it again. Go ahead, just, just try it. Uh, I look over to Ezekiel. Go no, I no, said, don't, don't, don't worry about Sourpuss over here. He doesn't know whether to check his ass or scratch his watch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all funny. You're all funny. Yep. Yeah. Great. Stuck with a bunch of losers that uh, want to make jokes, look around, be buddies. I got you. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you say? Garage. Garage G. What was it? 
what, what he had said beforehand is to gear up. And you guys have been in this facility for quite some time now. You don't know where you are you, you, when you guys got recruited. You're in a facility, you don't know where it is, but you do know it is, you know the layout of it. There are training areas you guys have spent a lot of time in. There are bunks and uh, rooms. There's also the cage. And the cage, while you guys have not used it yet, is where you guys, where other agents gear up before missions. Oh, I've been excited about visiting the cage ever since I came here. Uh, and I, All right. Let's go! Let's go to the cage! And then I'd start walking off towards the cage. Go to the cage! Go to the cage! <laughs> He's quite an excitable young man. I believe that I agree with him, though. Let's go arm ourselves. Alright. And you guys have seen this in passing, like I said. It is an entirely plexiglass room. There are shelves and hooks on the walls, just lined with a huge array of weaponry, body armor, and gadgetry of all shapes and sizes. Sitting in a metal stool is a woman. Seems to be in her maybe 70s. She's got gray hair and tight curls. As you approach, she exhales a billowing cloud of smoke as she removes a vape from her mouth. Well, hello, honeys. What can I get you? <laughs> is this the, is this the <laughs> same one? <laughs> it's, it's not the same woman. It's not Granny? Okay. <laughs> it, this well, is great. This, this, is the, this universe is Granny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Uh, we came here. We got an assignment. And now we can... We finally get to use this. What? Give us some stuff. Give us stuff. Yeah, <laughs> Just let me get check, too honey. And she uh, kind of pulls out a small computer and types it in. <laughs> ah, okay, you're on the the McGill case. All right, what are you? What are y'all looking for? Well, I, uh, I, I personally prefer a Libera four to five. If you have one of those in back. Uh, Ty doesn't know anything about guns. What kind of gun is that? <laughs> it's a four to five caliber pistol. Magazine loaded. All right, I need you to make a bureaucracy roll. Excellent. 45, here you go. She pulls out a medium pistol. It is a medium pistol. Can I have some extra bullets with it, ma'am? <laughs> Just in case, you know, we get into a scrap. Or they, uh, whatever persuasion is in this. I think, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, it's uh, just persuade. <laughs> oh, yeah, you roll a persuade oh, check. For you, honey. Don't worry. And she slams you another uh, box of bullets. You get another box of, of uh, 50 bullets. Give her a wink. <laughs> Do we have anything uh, yes, discreet? Do we have anything discreet that uh, that has AI capabilities and maybe something that can connect to the to the internet via cellular? For a gun? No, no, no not, not a money. gun. For you know, like maybe uh, maybe something that I can use to quickly look up intel or hack something or you know. Oh, we can get you a tablet or a uh, a smartphone if you're looking for that. Is it this year's smartphone? Bro, he can roll, a, <laughs> roll another bureaucracy check. I got a 65 out of 50. Unfortunately, all we have is the, uh, we got the iPhone 5 Plus. 5 Plus? Uh, do you have a it Samsung phone? You got you got an Android? Yeah, all the other agents wanted the Samsungs, unfortunately. Yeah, all that's we got because the, the Samsungs can be, you can hack the music. <laughs> I'd take the phone. Uh, and then I guess, I don't know, what kind of gun would you recommend for me? Well, you look like a like a little string bean of a man. How about a uh, how about a a thirty eight special, something small? Yeah, I could I can I can do with that. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, you have a thirty eight special. All right, and ignore this part as I change my voice to the actual voice I meant to use the whole time and couldn't remember until just now. Cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, look here, love. All right, I need something sharp. Knives. I need all sorts of knives. I need big knives. I need small knives. I need knives you can throw. I need knives that I can hold, not to stab somebody. Twist a little bit. You know what I mean, love? I do. We got we got knives. She she like gets off her chair and kind of hobbles a little bit and pulls out a large two-ended claymore. We got knives as big as this. We got them <laughs> small as my pinky. <laughs> all right, love. Let, let's get let's get a little different here. Let's go with the uh, knives about as big as my finger. And we'll go, let's get a knife about as big as my forearm. How about one of those? And then, then give me a few in between there, yeah? In the um, background, yeah. I'm, I'm installing an app on the iPhone, and I'm, I just kind of look over and nervously because you sound like a psychopath. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just like, <laughs> sound uh, like a complete maniac. She gives you um, a small knife. You have a large knife, size of your, uh, like, a, like a big old combat knife. And the last thing you have is a big old machete. Hey, throwing knives or no? Um, the knives could be throwing knives, yes. You can throw, I mean, let's say she gives you two, and you can throw them if you'd like. 
Anything else from you boys? I know it's your first trip out. So the the <laughs> iPhone's nice and all. I've already like kind of started hacking it. Um, do you have anything? This is for more of my portable stuff that I could bring pretty much anywhere. But do you have anything that maybe I can set up with a base, like a laptop? Any kind of laptop? Oh, we can get you a laptop. Don't worry. Uh. What year are you looking for? What kind of laptop? You got a preference. I mean, obviously, got, the newest the Alienware idea. is the only way to really go, right? Or if you can make a custom-built one, that's probably the best. Uh, no. Really ramp up those... <laughs> Ram. Okay. <laughs> uh, what do you... Uh, what, uh, what's the most up-to-date one you have, then? Roll, roll another Braxy check. I got a laptop from last year. It, it looks... It looks pretty nice. That'll probably do. That, uh, that, that I think, I can work with. All right. Now... Madame, do you have any of those uh, fancy in the ear? I, I don't know what you call them, walkie talkies, but they're, you know. Oh, those subtle. are, yeah. Here, she actually she goes back and gets you guys. She hands out three of them for everyone, oh, and nice. she hands out a burner cell phone. If you ever need something from the handler, this is how you'll get a hold of him. Oh, fantastic. His, you know, contact is uh, spotty on missions, but in case you need something, here, here's how you do it. And now, you know, this, uh, this fine exterior does not like to take damage can I perhaps get one of those undercover vests roll get her roll for it yep she uh she hands you a Kevlar vest now you gotta be careful with this if you're wearing an under if someone looks too close they might know but I'll first especially on a skinny lad like you well perhaps it'll fill me out a little bit thank you very much um besides anything to help us ascertain the veracity of the boy's claims perhaps i don't know uh but those kinds of things usually require a lab yeah i don't think we're gonna be able to uh give yeah. you a truth drug or anything that's ridiculous <laughs> hopefully i can find stuff DNA using test. my laptop that might help i don't know yeah, perhaps i love i just want to i want a few little little small things if you don't mind sweetie what um, you looking for? Love, I'm one, one of those up close and personal types. You know, I like to get right in there. I like to see like people right in their guy. eye. You know, I like to look right deep into their soul when I when I look at them. <sighs> I'd like a little bit of night me vision. Me too, honey. Mm. <laughs> and love, let me say, dear, the, the haze that just surrounds your gorgeous body. Love, just it, it adds just this mystery. This essence, I mean, my dear, exquisite. What you looking for? <laughs> I'm moist enough already. What are you looking for? <laughs> Niagara Falls over here. <laughs> well, love, no, nothing too much. I wouldn't want to trouble you. I would like a little. I, I'd like some night vision goggles, so I can I can kind of mosey on in there. And I I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind a little a little. Armor like my chum here, but I, I don't really want something that they could see. You got something maybe a little less bulky. You know, I don't like things cramping my style. And then a, maybe just a small thistle, just a little bitty one, just some for emergencies. Roll a charisma check. She comes out with uh, two more, and they're very, they're a little thinner. She says, well, these aren't, these aren't gonna, you know, stand up to quite as many blows, but they'll, uh, they can be hidden. You mind if I get oh. one of those? Cause I all right, know. one for you, cute. One for you too. Ah, oh, thanks, Granny. <laughs> did I get my other stuff too? Or no? No, you got a Walther PPK, but you did not get night vision goggles. Ah, oh, I really wanted the only. And then one last push. thing. Can, can, I'm gonna push for those night vision goggles right now. Sure. <laughs> can you? You might How be going down on the it? Granny lady. <laughs> four, four, I got 42. That's better. She says, "Well." I mean, love. I'm gonna oh, need you to. I'm gonna need you to sneak in a pack of uh, some new vape juice. I'm looking at that fruity tootie. Maybe some vanilla dreams. Fruity. I'm running low. Oh, love. You know, if you want, if you want the best flavor, you really need to mix the banana splits with the chocolate. So it's just like a banana split with chocolate syrup on it. You're an enthusiast. Well, <sighs> bring me back something good. And she hands you some additional goggles. <sighs> One last thing, Granny, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, no problem. I like staying in the back, far away from everything. Um, so I have a good 38 special here for getting, it, you know, concealing and stuff. But if we go into a place knowing we want to bring a bunch of equipment with us, is there any way I can get something a bit more heavy duty, like a submachine gun and or sniper rifle? <laughs> I was relatively decent with those. 
Unfortunately, honey, I think that's all you can handle. I'll give you here. Right for you. She hands you a nice stun gun. Oh. I think this might be more your speed. Oh, I was gonna it's ask. Not bad it. at all, actually. Yeah. Well, I think that's about all I can. Uh... <coughs> God, this voice kills me. <laughs> that's about all I can. Uh... Let's with, talk uh... for a tour, tour for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> they did the first time. Danny, really um... tell us about your life up until this point. <laughs> <laughs> Don't it's skim on the details. <laughs> And love, right. you sound like you sound like you used to be a singer, love. I just wanna let you know I, how much we I'm appreciate the... you. You're a saint, you really are. But thank you. Before I'm a Virginia Slims, now please bring me my juice. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are now left in the facility. All right. Well, uh, I suppose we should talk to the handler, maybe, and talk about how we're gonna get to where we need to go. I think it sounds like a delightful idea. Uh, mission deployed, boys. Mission deployed. Right, I don't know, let's go, go to the handler's office. Okay, you guys go to the office, and, um, okay. you see the handler. What do you... What do you maggots want? Uh, I guess a helicopter to where we need to go. I think it's in California, right? Yes, again, my man. I said garage six in 20 minutes. <laughs> Get there. Did I, oh. I said that earlier. Well, just, just check it in. I just yeah, go. Yeah, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Does not listen yeah, to orders stop, very stop. well. <laughs> boy's nervous, alright? The boy's... We came here just to let him air out some concerns, make him feel comfortable. You you just have such a, a presence Keep among talk, us. fuckers! Time to go! <laughs> <laughs> and, I don't know how. You, right. you do not think I know how to manage my time? <laughs> <laughs> you guys spent a lot of time here. talking to Granny. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> alright, you guys, um, see... You... Six bait packets or whatever you use for those. Yeah. <laughs> Little juice. I eat like it's juice. It's juice. Vape I juice. No um, I, I vape. <laughs> I, I, I vape. <laughs> I vape. I cloud it up like the rest of them. <laughs> um, you guys enter the garage. Uh, garage six. It is. They're all labeled. Um, and you see a black 2017 Yukon SLT. It's a black like SUV. Um, and it's got temporary plates on back. Ooh, nice. Um, and the garage is dark. This is just a dark room except for this one vehicle, and there is a metal door in front of where it is pointed. Uh, Gordon, Gordon no. walks to the car, opens up the passenger front door, and says, <laughs> shotgun, and sits down and just waits for someone to drive. Now, I will admit, I did not do my fair share driving growing up. That was what we had the chauffeur for. Um, so if either of you are particularly good behind the wheel, I would... Uh, I would allow you to take the privilege. I've driven across the country before. I can do it. Oh, wonderful. And I'll hop in the back as I'm accustomed to. <laughs> <laughs> I get in the front seat and I adjust all the mirrors. And I adjust all the mirrors. And then I turn on the car. Is this one of those cars that also has like a Bluetooth display and all that stuff? Yeah. Yeah, that's 20. It's this year. Or 2017. So it's a couple years ago. It's still ah, pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, so I uh, I go on my phone and I connect my phone to it and I start hacking it a little bit so that I can okay. play my own uh, radio play stations this? and stuff on it. <laughs> what, are, <laughs> what are you playing? What what kind of music are you playing? Uh, it's it's all millennial music, so it's like uh, oh. what's it called? It's like eight bit Abenabashi things <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Uh, Anamanaguchi, I think, was the name of the band. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, oh. bit tune. <laughs> Oh, you it's wanted me to drive, so this is what we're getting. <laughs> My lord. <laughs> he, um, and I'll, I'll, look, I'll look over to Gordon and I'll say, I think he's only got one oil in the water, if you know what I mean. <laughs> this lad over here just... just I, I lean back, I just pull something down <laughs> over my eyes. <laughs> Let me know when we get there. Alright, you, uh... Are you starting the car? Uh, yeah. It explodes, you're uh, all dead. We're only dead. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen that coming. Your training led you nowhere. <laughs> um, uh, as you turn it on, the metal door in front of you just slowly parts. And you just see a tunnel. Blue with yellow lamps as far as you can see in front of you. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, this will unravel the mystery of where we actually are located. I don't know about you, but they never told me where, where this base is. No, I have no idea, but... Only one way to find out, and I slowly start the car moving, and it goes... Because I'm a very careful driver. <laughs> <laughs> what is your drive... Uh, roll a drive check. 
and you, you know, as the more you drive, the more comfortable you feel in this vehicle, and you've, you know, you got your jams playing, so it just feels right. Yes. Feels good. I feel um, like and I'm in drive... a video game road trip. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I feel like I'm in mind. some video game central around it. Like, Final <laughs> Fantasy fifteen. I wanted to make a no. joke, but I ended up just saying make... it. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do it. It's copyright law. Um, you drive for... It's hard to tell. You know, there aren't... You know, there's lights that all just see them same, and you just keep going through this tunnel for a couple hours. Um, after a while, eventually you see the tunnel goes up. It's a long and load screen. Can, and as you continue to ascend, um, you see you're just pouring rain and thunder from the opening on the top of the tunnel. Ooh, so bad outside. I turn on the windshield wipers and lean in. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you do, you, you drive up the ascent and you exit and you're on a street. You're on a street and there is pouring rain and thunder. Now that we're above ground, I'm going to use my phone because I, I hacked it to work with the Bluetooth display to, to show my, uh, uh, I guess, Google Maps-esque service to uh, figure out where I need to go. Yes. Uh, as you activate it, um, I want you to roll luck check. Yeah, you pass. Um, it seems, the display seems to crack a little bit with, you know, some interference maybe from the storm. Uh, but when it finally fully loads, you're about two miles away from Trailhead Station in near the Yosemite Park. Oh, nice. Perfect. Uh, so where... Uh, I, I lean out... I, I turn the music down because it's been blasting. <laughs> I turn, I'm, the, like, I'm like in a trance state in the back, <laughs> just not listening. <laughs> I turn to uh, uh, Gordon and I just kind of... Um, I kind of nudge him a little bit. Hey, Gordon. Gordon. <clears throat> you, yeah? took, you took notes about this Billy kid, right? Or Brandon. Brandon was his name, right? Yeah. Where do you where do you think we should Look. head to go find Brandon first? Where do you where do you think our first stop should be? We should probably go talk to the boy right first. Here. That sounds like a good read, idea. Read my mind, lad. Read my mind. All right, pedal to the metal, and I go five feet, and I stop it's because it's a red light, and I turn on my uh, I turn on my blinker, and I wait for the red light to change, and then it changes, and then we go. <laughs> Look here, boys. All right. It was a right well, turn I needed to make too, but I didn't. I didn't want to risk it. <laughs> one might be forty-five years of age by the time we get there. Yeah. 